What's up everyone, my name is Matthew Dale and today we're gonna to take a look at the filter block. Now, while the filter block doesn't really seem as exciting as some of the other great blocks in the fractal universe at first glance, uh, it can really be used as kind of your Swiss army knife of effect blocks. So here we are in Axe Edit. I've got the AC20 called up to be, you know, uh, break up a little bit, nice and bright and chimey. <laughs> And I'm running through the AC20 cabs, and I've got a little bit of recording studio, reverb, and some delay going on as well. For these settings and for some other great settings on some other fantastic amps in the Fractal Universe, go ahead and download my Fractal Favorite Amps and Cabs Guide. You can find it in the link in the description below. So the name of the game today is going to be the filter block. Now, I like to use the filter block first and foremost as just a general level boost. It's completely transparent and if we go over here to the level control and if we just dial in maybe 3 dB or so this gives us a very natural level boost it could be for a solo boost or for whatever sort of other application you might have I'm going to use it as sort of a solo boost here's my regular tone and now I'm just going to hit the filter and boost it And this is nice when you assign it to the filter block because you can move this block around so you can control where it's doing the boosting. So right now the filter block is also boosting the input of the reverb and, and the delay. If I move it in the middle of these this parallel routing, then you get more of the dry signal. And this can kind of help you jump out of a dense mix if you've got a lot of effects going. Of course, you could put it right by the output and get a level boost of everything. So there's more effects in there. Now you can also tailor make the filter block to be kind of a custom drive pedal or a custom boost pedal for you. So right now we're gonna put it before the amplifier and we're gonna boost the amplifier up. So I'm going to go down here and I'm gonna select the high pass filter and now I've got this shelf that can be used to dial out some of the excess low end that can build up when you're boosting an amplifier. So I'm going to boost around or I'm going to cut around 350 or so and let's jack the level up all the way and we'll see what this does. Uh, maybe not all the way, it goes up 20 decibels, that's going to be a lot but I'll do uh, 10 dB or so. So here it is off and now on. So it hits the input of the amp, it's giving us more saturation and it's also cleaning up the low end. Now what if I want a little bit more of a mid hump on it or something? If we adjust the cue, I can get a little bit of a hump here and add a little bit of gain. And it sounds like this. Almost kind of like a cocked wah type of thing, but in one sort of drive, custom drive pedal that we're making. So, off and on. There's another way we can set this up to be even more of a custom pedal. Let's go ahead and put on the peaking filter. Now, the frequency is exactly the frequency that I want to boost. So let's boost somewhere right around the 650 mark, somewhere on there. Let's widen up our cue and let's hit the boost. Now the low cut and high cut can be nice to tailor out certain frequencies that we don't want. I'm gonna cut the boost uh, around 150 and then let's do a high cut maybe around 5K or so, let's see. What this sounds like, again, here it is off. And let's turn it on. So it gives us a lot of control in our drive and our distortion tones. Now, if we go ahead and we select the low pass filter, we can make a custom wah out of this as well. 
So on the frequency knob, I'm going to create a modifier and let's select this on external one, which is my expression pedal. And now as I move the expression pedal, it also moves this filter around. Now, at first glance, this doesn't really do a whole lot. I'm also, let's see, yeah, I'm not boosting anything. So if I, it's kind of like a weird volume pedal right now. We can make it more like a wah pedal by doing this. Let's go ahead and we're gonna up the Q to give us a little bit of this hump right here. And I'm gonna adjust the modifier control where we are going down to about 300 or so, and we will back this up to about 5,000K. So that's the range in which we are sweeping. If I get out of this, you can see the range of my sweep has been drastically reduced, which is what we want for a wah. So now, we've got our custom wah out of there. Now, one of the more popular uses for the filter block is probably an auto wah or an envelope filter. So if I go back over to my modifier controls, instead of the the uh, expression pedal where I can use it as a wah, I'm gonna select the envelope follower. And I might adjust these parameter ranges a little bit. Let's bring this down to about 150 or so, and we'll go up a little bit. So it's a little bit of a greater range. Now, as I play, I've got an envelope filter or an auto wah. <laughs> And you can really adjust how much this quacks with the Q control. If you bring this up and if you add a little bit of gain, it'll give us a little more of that signature sound. This is kind of fun to mess around with too. I'm gonna lower the parameter, maybe around 100 hertz a little bit, just so it gives us a little more low end. This is kind of fun to use after the amp and cab lock as well. So if I bring it over here, it's gonna give us a bit more of that spank. So those are a couple of case uses for the filter block. Remember, if you want some killer amp settings and some killer cabinets to go along with those amplifiers, download my Fractal Favorites Amps and Cabs Guide. It'll be available in the description below. My name is Matthew Dale. I'm gonna play you out with this auto filter sound. I'll see you on the next one. Bam, 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 bam,